Hello. Thank you very much for inviting me to uh, speak at uh, the uh, digital um, about digital route exchange test beds and single windows in digital at the Asia Pacific. I think we already had uh, interesting discussions um, about uh, different aspects we were uh, looking into. And uh, um, I want to focus a little bit more on the technical aspects of the data, the data exchange, and what we do with all of that and how that can actually facilitate what we already heard from other uh, speakers like in our session from uh, Jeppe and from Thomas. So please go to the next slide. When I take a look to our current development and digitalization and uh, Jeppe was uh, very well uh, positioning us there where we are, we see quite a few different initiatives and a growing number of, uh, of data streams which are coming both to the ships as well as to the shore. We just talked briefly about one of the major ones which we are seeing. Um, currently in development is S421, Voyage Information. That goes back to the discussion we had in, in session one what do we need in for uh, supporting STM? What do we need for supporting port call optimization? The voyage information services from IEC uh, will be an international standard uh, uh, which actually exchange information about the voyage, where the ship is and where the ship intends to go with timestamps for the voyage. What we also have Growingly available are historic traffic data. AIS data is now available as a, at a, a larger uh, uh, amount of information about how the traffic is behaving on a historical basis and can be used for uh, artificial intelligence to predict future developments of traffic. We have more and more port sensor data available, information about pollution in the port, about weather, weather temperature, oceanographic information, tidal information, and other information in the port and in the entrance of the port. A lot of ports are starting to implement, already have implemented port community systems and receiving data and collecting data, storing and disseminating in the port those data in the port community systems. We have S101 coming up, uh, which will be the replacement of S57 ENCs uh, in the GI registry of IHO. We have growing amount of SAT data, satellite data available as SAT overlays uh, on systems um, um, uh, all over the place. So please stay on the uh, uh, prior slide. We have risk analysis data available. Um, but at the same time, when we take about all of those information, be it AIS, um, uh, real-time data, S111 current data, or S124 navigational data, or what we already talked about, pod call message formats in S211, um, we are actually open for cyber threats. And we also receive information about thy best threats. Um, may I please ask you to go to the prior slide, slide two of my presentation, because I'm focusing on that right now. I will tell you when go to slide three. Thank you. So, as we are, um, uh, as we are exchanging more and more information, there is a threat that that will be captured and we get wrong information. I will get to that in a, a few minutes. Um, but we also receive information about cyber threats. So where do cyber threats occur? What issues are coming up, which we also can use for our analysis? We do. Now, IMO has trying to work on harmonizing those data exchanges. We already talked um, um, about these, and uh, Chapa was putting that quite well, harmonization and collaboration is 
an important aspect as we are moving forward. And it will only work if we are harmonizing and if we are uh, cooperating. IMO has built the e-navigation concept and elaborated on that, on that uh, with the help of other organizations in building an international information flow which helps connecting the ships and the ports, the ports and the ships, and the shore and the shore, so ports and ports. This information flow between ships and shore, shore and shore, ship and ship uh, and ship and shore is essential for us moving forward. And the IMO is with different initiatives is helping us moving forward, same with other organizations in the standardization. So move to the next slide, please. When we go to the uh, digital route exchange, we are talking mainly about two different aspects um, of what is needed in order to know where a ship is, where a ship wants to go, how the port call will be conducted, and when the ship will leave for the next port call. We have S41, which I alluded to a few minutes ago, uh, which IEC is working on for the voyage information, which is more or less looking at the voyage from a port to a port with waypoints, with timestamps, and so on and so forth. We have S211, the IALA standard, uh, which is actually um, um, governed by the International Port CDM Council, um, which is exchanging timestamps about the port and is enabling the port to receive the information which we have heard of from Ulceva, for example, in the STM uh, uh, project. It's what is happening on the port? And it's also connecting the port to the hinterland, which is essential for running smooth operations. What is interesting and what is important is that IMO, in the definition of maritime service for port support services, has identified in uh, IMO MSC 1 Circular 1610 that S211 and S421 are part of the data exchange in support of port support services. Those two standards and other standards like the currently um, expected to start development in, uh, in ISO on port messages and of course the development in IMO on the, uh, um, uh, uh, on the com IMO compendium helps to globally exchange information and helps the collaboration, which is, which is essential, as Chepper was already mentioned. We go to the next slide, please. We we'll take a look what is going on right now. Digitalization is a must. So when we take a look to the picture on the bottom left, that is actually an, a, a picture of a bridge of a cruise ship in the 60s. Um, and there was not much data exchange um, because digitalization was not possible and not done. But when we take a look to the other pictures of vessel traffic services or of the bridges, they are all depending on additional data to be shared and to be made available. And that is essential. From that point of view, I can only underline the importance of digitalization. And in that respect, especially of the route exchange and the port call message format for the organizations to know how the ship can be best organized in the way to the port, through the port call, and in departing for the next port. So next slide, please. We already saw that from uh, Thomas um, on the maritime connectivity platform. What I want to highlight in that picture is that in order to execute on digitalization, we need to be sure 
that the data we receive in our systems is actually authenticated. It is actually the data which we want to use because if somebody from the outside is either faking data or is manipulating data, we will get wrong results and we will have um, very much difficulties. That is the cyber threat which is apparent in the way of digitalization and in our use of data coming from the outside for our decisions. And the MCP is addressing exactly that. You have the identity register where you actually register yourself and say you are exactly the person you are telling you are and with whom you connect is actually the organization service provider with whom you want to connect and not with somebody else who want to fake you. And you are in a position to actually identify and um, um, access those services which you need to. Either that these are retrieval information when you get weather information as others, or you are sending information out, for example, at ship reporting. Next slide, please. Ulf Siva has already talked about the STM validation project and the concept of data exchange, safe data exchange, route exchange and the utilization of those right exchange has been validated through the STM validation project and in other projects uh, like the STEAM project in Cyprus and others. Next slide. Now, one thing what has been apparent, and I'm happy that Korea actually is focusing on that, is that most all of the current e-navigation test beds have been regional or national test beds. What we try to accomplish, or Korea tries to accomplish, and big thanks to um, uh, San De Hong for actually initiating that, is to look for a global maritime digital route test bed where you actually utilize e-navigational aspects, e-navigation as uh, exchange throughout a voyage from Korea to Europe. So that would be the first time that we actually validate internationally on global, um, uh, on a global uh, um, uh, scheme that e-navigation works from birth to birth, from continent to continent, from in big distances, passing interesting and challenging environments as we are moving through the voyage of a ship. So you should stay tuned what is coming up in these developments, in these test beds expected to start in 2023. So with that, I thank for your attention and I hope you find it interesting and uh, um, I'm, I'm glad that I could present you. Thanks a lot.